Hello and welcome back to the Alchemical Arts. Today I'm continuing my Cobalt series and I'm, I'm re-attempting my Turkish green, cerulean blue, sort of turquoisey sort of cobalt based pigments. I have here, this is my sort of benchmark that I'm working towards. This is a cerulean blue chromium. It's a teal cobalt blue green sort of color. It's incredibly brilliant and I've always really enjoyed this this pigment. That's the benchmark. These are my mixtures here today that I'm going to go through. If you haven't checked out part one, where I sort of show more in depth how I make these mixtures and sort of the properties behind them, please check that out. For expediency, I won't go through that process today. I'm more looking at, will these particular mixtures yield the results I want? So up the back here, we have two mixtures that are composed of... The green powder here is chromium oxide. The white powder is aluminum hydrate, which is just aluminium hydroxide. And the pink powder is the cobalt carbonate. Now, these two up the back here are recipes that I found in small books. So I'm trying out two different formulations where you're just varying the ratios between the three ingredients. Down the bottom here, we're doing two different tests of a different nature. So the bottom one here has cobalt chloride, aluminium hydroxide, and zinc oxide. Because if you make a cobalt and zinc mixture, you get a green pigment. If you make a cobalt and aluminium mixture, you get a blue pigment. So by varying the ratios, we might be able to get something in between, which will be that turquoisey teal that we're looking for. The fourth one here is another attempt at a long-running project I've been working on, which is to make what the literature refers to as cerulean blue, which is a cobalt and tin oxide mixture. So here we have cobalt oxide, tin oxide, or stannic oxide. And we also have some silica here, which is kind of hard. This has been a bit of a problem. I've been playing around with trying to make tin compounds for this mixture. And I don't know if it's because tin is the metal of Jupiter and fathers are stubborn, but tin is a difficult, it's a difficult compound to work with and it's stubborn and it, and it won't seem to produce the results that I want. So what I'll do is I'll grind all of these Grind all of these up in the mortar, load them into the crucibles, and we'll get them into the forge, we'll fire it up. Hopefully this time I'm getting better at my forging process, or calcination, as it should be called. As I get more feel familiar with calcining pigments, I hope that I'm able to sort of hone in my results. So here we are down at the forge again. And we have our mixtures here all loaded into the crucibles. And the first two are our Turkish green attempts. So they're the cobalt, chromium, aluminum mixtures. Then we have our zinc mixture here, zinc cobalt mixture. And this one is the cerulean blue attempt with the tin oxide cobalt oxide, which went kind of a nice purpley gray color, which I really like just as is. Be interested to see what happens to this. So just load everything in. It's a nice sunny day today. And we'll get this all fired up. I'm also making sure this time, after my first round, to be very careful in securing the lids. So we've got some ceramic sheet here. Um, because I really want to keep any of the gases that are coming up from the forge getting into the chamber here and spoiling the pigment, which I think might have been the reason that the last attempts didn't work. Fingers crossed. Let's see how we go. It's been about five minutes now and we're already at 600 odd degrees. It's definitely getting hot in there. I'm gonna try and hold this. No, I'm just gonna try and push this temperature up. Um, I want to get this nice and hot. So yeah, we're at 1,070 degrees. Uh, I've been at this temperature for about 
15, 25 minutes now. I think I'm just gonna hold it for a tiny bit longer. As you can see, that's just really, really hot, like glowing in there. And hopefully everything's coming along nicely. Alright, so we got three colors and I think this one here is the one. It's the one that I've been after and I'm super proud, super happy with that. We'll get this all dried up, cleaned up and filtered and then we'll check them out. So here we are with the three samples after calcining um, through the forge. I say three samples because as I predicted this is what became of the tin oxide cerulean blue attempt which it stayed basically the same it was as stubborn as I said it was gonna be and I'll have to write that off as a fail. So with the remaining three samples that I've got I was actually exceedingly happy like with the results so all three of them worked out all three of them in different ways so if we take the one over here this one was the Turkish green mixture with the slightly less aluminium hydroxide and it managed to produce this incredibly gorgeous deep turquoisey green color that I'm, I'm just thrilled with. This one in the middle here was probably the most successful. This was the cobalt chromium mixture that I did in the first part of this series that turned out that black green color that completely failed. And this is the one that I was trying to see if I could get it to be of a similar shade to our benchmark pigment, which, as you can see here, I think I got pretty, pretty close. Um, if we compare the two, I'll just pop that there. I'll bring this one up. So yeah, if we compare the two, I think, although they're not quite exactly the same, this one's a tiny bit darker, they are very, very close. So the fact that I figured out that I can do that, is it's just incredible. I'm really, I'm really blown away by, by the fact that this color turned out. And the last little sample here on the edge, this was our zinc and aluminium mixture. This one is interesting because it's a lot bluer than the others and a lot less green, but still nonetheless it has more of a turquoisey teal shade to it than the original cobalt blue from part one, which I compared it to. And so later I'll do a comparison of all the cobalt pigments to show you. But this gives me hope because uh, it means that I will be able to play around with the ratios of zinc and aluminium to cobalt and tilt things from green to blue and so forth um, which is also the same thing with these two because these two both contain the same starting materials they're just in different ratios and one is a more deep turquoise green and one is a bright vibrant teal so a lot that can work here uh, as for the Besky Cerulean tin, I'm not sure. I might just leave that on the back burner for now. Anyway, thank you for tuning in for part two. It was an exciting uh, revelation for me. Happy that I could set out with an intention of creating a particular shade like this one here and actually get close to achieving that or pretty much achieve that. Uh, there's still plenty more to go in the Cobalt series, so stay tuned for the next one, and thank you for tuning in today to the Alchemical Arts. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and hope you have a good day.